Yeah, so thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, with these lives, as promised, we'll keep things short and very developer focused. So today I wanna to talk about one of the new operators um, as part of the new um, a new provider package that was just released in Airflow. So that's the SQL column check operator. Um, we'll go ahead and dive right in. And this operator is gonna be used uh, within your DAGs to do data quality checks um, in Airflow. So that's a huge topic in itself. We won't dive into that in just our 10 minute session today, um, but we will have more resources for that in the, in the next, um, in the coming weeks. But in the most recent uh, July Airflow providers release, there's a new provider called Common SQL. Um, this is going to be a provider that has uh, contains modules for interacting with SQL-like databases. Um, so pretty much any database that you regularly interact with, um, you know, your Snowflakes, your Redshifts, your BigQueries, um, your Postgres, things like that, um, this is going to work for. And the available modules today, again, we're going to focus on the SQL column check operator. Um, I'm on the Astronomer Registry here. This is a great place to come to learn more about the operator and get started with it. Um, but at a high level, uh, what all of this text is saying here is the SQL column check operator is going to perform one or more um, data quality checks on a uh, column in a table that or multiple columns in a table um, that you point it to. So this can be really great, again, for implementing data quality checks within your DAGs. So say you need to make sure that your data fits certain parameters before you move on with steps downstream in your DAG. Um, this is going to be a great way to do that. So what I'm going to show today is just a super quick and simple how you can get started uh, with this operator and actually implement it. So with that, um, oops. Uh, going to hop over to my code editor here and dive right into get starting, getting started with um, the operator. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you install this provider package within your Airflow environment. So that's this first one, this provider's common SQL. Um, I'm also using Snowflake in this case as the database that I'm using as my backend, so I install that one as well. Your mileage will vary for what else you need in your Airflow environment, but you'll want this common SQL one. Once I have that installed, then I have the SQL column check operator available to me. And I'm gonna take a look at this SQL check DAG. Um, so actually, before I go through the DAG code, let's hop over to Airflow and look at um, what this DAG looks like in uh, a graph view. So what I have is I'm going to create a table. I'm gonna insert some data into that table, and then I'm gonna run some checks on that data to make sure that everything looks okay. Um, once I'm done, I'm going to move on to the rest of my DAG. In my particular case, for the example, we're just going to delete the table. But in your case, you would probably go on to, you know, do some analysis on that data or load it into a production table, whatever else you were doing downstream. So pretty straightforward. Um, to implement that check in the DAG, uh, and up front, I'm going to uh, import the operator. So here's my SQL column check. And then obviously my other... Um, Snowflake operators that are doing those first two tasks. And then this here is where I actually implement the SQL column check operator. So this, uh, um, uh, the way that you implement this operator is super straightforward. So obviously I give it a task ID like any others. Um, I'm gonna provide a connection ID that's gonna be to whatever database I'm running these checks against. So in my case, I'm using Snowflake. Again, this could be whatever database that you're working with. I'm going to point it to a particular table. Um, so uh, this is the table of data that I'm working on. And then after that, this is the important piece of this. So I'm going to provide it a column mapping with all of my checks. One of the really nice things about this operator is that you can put all of your checks into a single mapping. So you don't have to have a separate operator for every check you wanna run. In my particular case, I'm implementing two here. Um, but you might have a lot more, right? If, you're, if your table is really big and you need to run a lot of checks, um, it's gonna allow you to uh, do all of those in one mapping. So these are really easy to define, um, just some simple JSON here. So uh, this first piece is the uh, ID, sorry, the ID. <laughs> this column is called ID, but the, the name of the column that you're running the check against then you're going to provide it with which check you're running. And I'll walk through in a minute 
in a minute what all of the options are, but in this case, we're doing a null check. And then you're gonna provide your criteria. So in my case, for the null check, we say equal to zero. That means that I'm saying that none of the values in this column can be nulls. Um, so my ID column has to be populated for every thing. The second check I'm gonna run here is on the RH column. Um, again, in this one, we're going to check that the max is less than or equal to 100. Um, so if that, we're assuming that every uh, one of these RH values is less than 100. Um, if I go run this DAG now, this one, oh, interesting. Um, Go back to, sorry about that. Try and trigger this again. Random airflow glitch. Um, trigger this DAG, this DAG, this is now running. Um, and we should get to my check here. And this one is going to succeed. So everything looks great. I can move on with the rest of my DAG. I also wanna look at a case where this is going to fail. So in this particular, um, Example, I'm loading some data. Again, remember that I said this column has to be less than or equal to 100. So I'm going to pop over here and just to show what happens, I'm going to edit my raw data and make a value in that column greater than 100. So it's now 105. So this should now fail my check. If I go and trigger this again, um, we're going to run the DAG again. And we should see a failure in our column check operator. So we do. And if I now look at this task and go to my logs, it's going to tell me exactly what check failed. So I scroll down here, um, it says, I have a test that failed. Um, this is the query that was run. So I'm selecting the max of that RH column. The result was 105. The check value was, it was supposed to be less than 100, it's not, so that one failed. Um, obviously, this is super helpful, again, if you have multiple checks that you're running within a single operator to be able to see exactly what failed in the logs, um, come in and then make any corrections. Uh, so again, super easy to implement. I could uh, implement a whole bunch more checks within the same operator if I wanted to. Uh, back to my slides here. This is just a quick summary of uh, the available checks in this operator. So you saw me do the null check and the max. You can also do min um, as well as a unique check and a distinct check. And then the qualifiers that you can implement here um, are the following. So this is to get you, um, again, whichever sort of value you're comparing against. So um, equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, so these are just showing the uh, the syntax there that you would use. And again, all of those are going to be implemented kind of in that JSON. Um, so super easy to use. Uh, it's really easy to implement this operator um, once you get started with it. Um, very low barrier to entry, not a lot of knowledge required, but really powerful in terms of what you can do with it. Uh, um, making sure that, you know, erroneous data doesn't make it into whatever downstream system or report that you're trying to, to keep it out of. Um, so that was the uh, kind of quick, super simple overview of this operator. I will note before we go into questions that we will be doing more um, kind of resources, webinars, and guides that we're publishing um, around using both this operator and the other modules in the new Common SQL provider. So uh, if you want more in-depth resources, be on the lookout for those. Um, and with that, for anybody who's joined us live today, we'll open it up if there are any questions. Awesome. Kenton, that was awesome. Um, thank you so much for your um, for going through that. So it looks like Mike had his hand raised. Mike, if you could type your question into the chat or the Q&A. There it is. Um, is it possible to use to define custom property checks, like some functions that return true or false in this operator? So not with this operator. Um, there are so there are other, as part of a different provider, other SQL check operators where basically you can construct a SQL statement that would return, uh, that you would want to either return zero or not return zero um, is how they work. So you might look into those. Uh, 
I'm trying to think of the name of it. I think it's just the SQL check operator, but look on the right. astronomer registry. It is on there. Um, uh, this operator is designed sort of specifically to be really easy to implement and that you don't have to think through the SQL, assuming your check falls into kind of one of these categories. Um, Raj, keep me honest here, but I think there is ongoing development in this provider as well to sort of build in more functionality. So this is just released. This is version 1.0 that we're working with here. Um, so there will be even more flexibility in the future. Yeah, there's definitely a lot coming here that we're very excited about. Um, if there's something you'd like to see specifically, um, Marin, I will actually drop my email in your chat answer and please reach out to me and you can definitely see um, see how that could work. But yeah, as Kenton said, like these are meant to be really straightforward to implement. I use them when right before I have data that's feeding a dashboard, I'll just throw that extra check in there, right? And it won't be any, um, it'll be really easy for me to implement, but it's not meant to be something that's like a full custom framework. Um, Kenton, Mike is asking if it's possible to check multiple tables at a time. So for this particular operator, you would, um, you would, it's only going to work on a single table. Well, so I should say, if you, if you want to run like a set of checks on a table and then a set of checks on another table, then you would do that in two separate operators. In our next live with Astronomer in two weeks, we will go over the SQL table check operator, um, which works a little bit differently. Uh, as far as I know, you can't provide like I, that's actually a good question that I don't know the answer to if you can provide a list of tables um, in your like if you want to run the same checks on multiple tables, you may be able to do that as a list and if not, I think that's functionality that's coming soon. Yeah, um, but pushy, as pushy. of today, if I had a list of tables, could I just generate a task per table? Oh, you absolutely could. The other thing, I mean, you can do that really easily with dynamic task mapping too, especially if you don't even know what all of the tables are going to be. So say I have the same checks that are going to be run on some unknown set of tables, you could definitely map over um, a list of tables and that's a super easy implementation, um, which is like a little bit of extra code. And then you would, again, just be generating a copy of that operator for each table. So that could be a really good way of going about it. Also potentially a better design for what you wanted to do downstream in most cases, because if checks failed on one table, but not on another, you may still want to move on with some of your downstream work as opposed to cutting the pipeline entirely. So lots of flexibility there though. Yeah, plus the whole item potency thing, but it, I think it depends on the case, right? Because maybe you don't want any dashboards created until all your tables check. Um, so I can see why you'd want that, Mike. Um, if that's something that you would want, then um, please reach out to us as well, right? We're happy to collaborate with the community on how some of the nuances around this should work. Um, cool. Any other questions from anybody? Um, I think there's some one more. Ah, here we go. Will this in future, in the future possibly distinct check what with specific outputs example? Check if a gender column has genders only. Ken, do you mind if I take that one? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Mike, I think when you're looking into something where like, hey, I want to have future distinct checks or um, maybe from a bunch of like predefined things, right? Like maybe I want to check to see all the zip codes or five digits or something. That's usually when I take a look at great expectations. You know, I think they have a really nice gallery of checks that you can probably use for that. Um, there may be future functionality into operator for that, Mike. Um, I can't say for sure if that's kind of, uh, I'll check with Benji on the team to see if that's the direction he wants to take it. But usually I think when you're getting to the point where you're checking for specific things like that, uh, maybe a tool like GE is the right way to go. Um, and we have some DAGs on the registry that'll show you how to use GE checks. We've got lots of great resources as well. Um, Benji and um, Tal from Great Expectations did a great webinar um, a couple months back, and we have some guides as well. So if that's a direction you want to go, um, in addition to this for data quality checks, there's you have a lot of a lot of resources to lean on for implementing that. Uh, Vihar, a link to the DAG. Yep, that'll be sent out. Um, that'll be sent out as part of the follow-up email. So no worries there. Yes. 
Awesome. Anything else from anybody else who's joined in? Going once, going twice. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your time on this Tuesday. I uh, really love where this is going and really appreciate some of the questions that you asked. Um, join us next week for our long form webinar. As Kenton said, we're going to have some more stuff around this provider coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, thank you all so much. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.